These prophecies will seem strange, almost impossible, yet they have come from the most learned and conservative minds in America to the wisest and most careful men in the greatest institutions of science and learning I have gone, asked each in his turn to forecast for me what, in his opinion, will have been wrought in his own field of investigation before the dawn of 2001, a century from now. These opinions I have carefully transcribed. Five hundred million people. There will probably be from 350 million to 500 million people in America and its possessions by the lapse of another century. Nicaragua will ask for admission to the Union after the completion of the Great Canal. Mexico will be next. Europe, seeking more territory to the South, will cause many of the South and Central American republics to be voted into the Union by their own people. The American will be taller, by from one to two inches. His increase of stature will result from better health, due to vast reforms in medicine, sanitation, food and athletics. He will live 50 years instead of 35 as at present, for he will reside in the suburbs. The city house will practically be no more. Building in blocks will be illegal. The trip from suburban home to office will require a few minutes only. A penny will pay the fare. <laughs> there will be no C, X or Q in our everyday alphabet. They will have been abandoned because they are unnecessary. Spelling by sound will have been adopted, first by the newspapers, English will be a language of condensed words, expressing condensed ideas, and will be more extensively spoken than any other. Russian will rank second. Hot and cold air from spigots. Hot or cold air will be turned on from spigots to regulate the temperature of a house, as we now turn on hot or cold water from spigots to regulate the temperature of the bath. Central plants will supply this cool air and heat to city houses in the same way as now our gas or electricity is furnished. Rising early to build the furnace fire will be a task of the olden times. Homes will have no chimneys, because no smoke will be created within the walls. Insect screens will be unnecessary. Mosquitoes, houseflies and roaches will have been practically exterminated. Boards of health will have destroyed all mosquito haunts and breeding grounds, drained all stagnant pools, filled in all swamplands and chemically treated all still water streams. The extermination of the horse and its stable will reduce the housefly. Ready-cooked meals will be bought from establishments similar to our bakeries of today. They will purchase materials in tremendous wholesale quantities and sell the cooked food at a price much lower than the cost of individual cooking. Food will be served hot or cold to private houses in pneumatic tubes or automobile wagons. The meal being over, the dishes used will be packed and returned to the cooking establishment where they will be washed. Such wholesale cookery will be done in electric laboratories rather than in kitchens. These laboratories will be equipped with electrical stoves and all sorts of electric devices, such as coffee grinders, egg beaters, stirrers, shakers, pairers, meat choppers, meat saws, potato mashers, lemon squeezers, dishwashers, dish dryers, and the like. Having one's own cook and purchasing one's own food will be an extravagance. Coal will not be used for heating or cooking. It will be scarce, but not entirely exhausted. The Earth's hard coal will last until the year 2050 or 2100, its soft coal mines until 2200 or 2300. Meanwhile, both kinds of coal will have become more and more expensive. Man will have found electricity manufactured by water power to be much cheaper.
there will be no streetcars in our large cities. All hurry traffic will be below or high above ground when brought within city limits. In most cities it will be confined to broad subways or tunnels, well lighted and ventilated. Or to high trestles with moving sidewalk stairways leading to the top. These underground or overhead streets will teem with capacious automobile passenger coaches and freight wagons with cushioned wheels. Subways or trestles will be reserved for express trains. Cities, therefore, will be free from all noise. Photographs will be telegraphed from any distance. If there be a battle in China a hundred years hence, snapshots of its most striking events will be published in the newspapers an hour later. Even today, photographs are being telegraphed over short distances. Photographs will reproduce all of nature's colours. Trains 150 miles an hour. Trains will run two miles a minute normally. Express trains 150 miles an hour. To go from New York to San Francisco will take a day and a night by fast express. There will be cigar-shaped electric locomotives hauling long trains of cars. Cars will, like houses, be artificially cooled. Along the railroads there will be no smoke, no cinders, because coal will neither be carried nor burned. There will be no stops for water. Passengers will travel through hot or dusty country regions with windows down. Automobiles will be cheaper than horses are today. Farmers will own automobile hay wagons, automobile truck wagons, ploughs, harrows and hay rakes. A one pound motor in one of these vehicles will do the work of a pair of horses or more. Children will ride in automobile sleighs in winter. Automobiles will have been substituted for every horse vehicle now known. There will be, as already exists today, automobile hearses, automobile police patrols, automobile ambulances, automobile street sweepers. The horse in harness will be as scarce, if indeed not even scarcer, than as the yoked ox is today. Everybody will walk 10 miles. Gymnastics will begin in the nursery, where toys and games will be designed to strengthen the muscles. Exercise will be compulsory in schools. Every school, college and community will have a complete gymnasium. All cities will have public gymnasiums. A man or woman unable to walk 10 miles at a stretch will be regarded as a weakling. To England in two days. Fast electric ships crossing the ocean at more than a mile a minute will go from New York to Liverpool in two days. The bodies of these ships will be built above the waves. They will be supported upon runners, somewhat like those of the sleigh. These runners will be very buoyant. Upon their undersides will be apertures expelling jets of air. In this way a film of air will be kept between them and the water's surface. Ships with cabins artificially cooled will be entirely fireproof. In storm they will dive below the water and there await fair weather. There will be air ships, but they will not successfully compete with surface cars and water vessels for passenger or freight traffic. They will be maintained as deadly war vessels by all military nations. Some will transport men and goods, others will be used by scientists making observations at great heights above the earth. Aerial warships and forts on wheels. Giant guns will shoot 25 miles or more and will hurl anywhere within such a radius shells exploding and destroying whole cities. This video is sponsored by NordVPN, a big supporter of original content on YouTube. So, a lot of the videos on Voices of the Past recently have been exploring international perspectives and crossing boundaries to understand how foreign cultures live and think. And that is what a VPN can do when it comes to Netflix, Amazon Prime and many more. As you may not know, I live in Spain and my version of Netflix is focused a little too much on cowboy based soap operas. So using NordVPN I've been able to enjoy American Netflix and glorious American cowboy based soap operas. 
as well as being able to protect your data when using Wi-Fi in public places and providing double data encryption, Nord even works in China. Very useful if you happen to have travelled all the way to see Kubla Khan and you want to document it on your Instagram stories for your squad back home. Try Nord now and get 68% off at only $3.71 a month and $89 for two years and get a free month thrown in by following this link or using the coupon. Thanks. Such guns will be aimed by aid of compasses when used on land or sea and telescopes when directed from great heights. Fleets of airships hiding themselves with dense smoky mists, thrown off by themselves as they move, will float over cities, fortifications, camps or fleets. They will surprise foes below by hurling upon them deadly thunderbolts. These aerial warships will necessitate bomb-proof forts, protected by great steel plates over their tops as well as at their sides. Huge forts on wheels will dash across open spaces at the speed of express trains of today. They will make what are now known as cavalry charges. Rifles will use silent cartridges. Submarine boats submerged for days will be capable of wiping a whole navy off the face of the deep. Balloons and flying machines will carry telescopes of 100 mile vision with camera attachments, photographing an enemy within that radius. These photographs, as distinct and large as if taken from across the street, will be lowered to the commanding officer in charge of troops below. There will be no wild animals, except in menageries. Rats and mice will have been exterminated, the horse will have become practically extinct, a few of high breed will be kept by the rich for racing, hunting and exercise, the automobile will have driven out the horse, cattle and sheep will have no horns, they will be unable to run faster than the fattened hog of today, a century ago the wild hog could outrun a horse. Food animals will be bred to expend practically all of their life energy in producing meat, milk, wool and, and other byproducts. Horns, bones, muscles and lungs will have been neglected. Man will see around the world. Persons and things of all kinds will be brought within focus of cameras, connected electrically with screens at opposite ends of circuits, thousands of miles at a span. American audiences in their theatres will view upon huge curtains before them the coronations of kings in Europe or the progress of battles in the Orient. The instrument bringing these distant scenes to the very doors of people will be connected with a giant telephone apparatus transmitting each incidental sound in its appropriate place. Thus, the guns of a distant battle will be heard to boom when seen to blaze, and thus the lips of a remote actor or singer will be heard to utter words or music when seen to move. Wireless telephone and telegraph circuits will span the world a husband in the middle of the Atlantic will be able to converse with his wife sitting in her boudoir in Chicago. We will be able to telephone to China quite as readily as we now talk from New York to Brooklyn. By an automatic signal they will connect with any circuit in their locality without the intervention of a hello girl. Grand Opera will be telephoned to private homes and will sound as harmonious as though enjoyed from a theatre box. Automatic instruments reproducing original airs exactly will bring the best music to the families of the untalented. Great musicians gathered in one enclosure in New York will, by manipulating electric keys, produce at the same time music from instruments arranged in theatres or halls in San Francisco or New Orleans. The piano will be capable of changing its tone from cheerful to sad. Many devices will add to the emotional effect of music. A 
A university education will be free to every man and woman. Several great national universities will have been established. Children will study a simple English grammar, adapted to simplified English, and not copied after the Latin. Time will be saved by grouping like studies. Poor students will be given free board, free clothing and free books, if ambitious and actually unable to meet their school and college expenses. Medical inspectors, regularly visiting the public schools, will furnish poor children with free eyeglasses, free dentistry and free medical attention of every kind. The very poor will, when necessary, get free rides to and from school and free lunches between sessions. In vacation time, poor children will be taken on trips to various parts of the world. Etiquette and housekeeping will be important studies in the public schools. Store purchases by tube. Pneumatic tubes instead of store wagons will deliver packages and bundles. These tubes will collect, deliver and transport mail over certain distances, perhaps for hundreds of miles. They will at first connect with the private houses of the wealthy, then with all homes. Great business establishments will extend them to stations, similar to our branch post offices of today. Vegetables grown by electricity. Winter will be turned into summer and night into day by the farmer. In cold weather, he will place heat-conducting electric wires under the soil of his garden and thus warm his growing plants. He will also grow large gardens under glass. Oranges will grow in Philadelphia. Fast-flying refrigerators on land and sea will bring delicious fruits from the tropics and southern temperate zones within a few days. The farmers of South America, South Africa, Australia and the South Sea Islands, whose seasons are directly opposite to ours, will thus supply us in winter with fresh summer foods which cannot be grown here. Strawberries as large as apples will be eaten by our great-great-grandchildren for their Christmas dinners a hundred years hence. Raspberries and blackberries will be as large. One will suffice for the fruit course of each person. Plants will be made proof against disease microbes just as readily as man is today against smallpox. Few drugs will be swallowed or taken into the stomach unless needed for the direct treatment of that organ itself. Drugs needed by the lungs, for instance, will be applied directly to those organs through the skin and flesh. They will be carried with the electric current applied without pain to the outside skin of the body. Microscopes will lay bare the vital organs through the living flesh of men and animals. The living body will, to medical purposes, be transparent. Not only will it be possible for a physician to actually see a living, throbbing heart inside the chest, but he will be able to magnify and photograph any part of it. This will be done with rays of invisible light.